You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Welcome to the Miss Artastic Podcast. I'm your host, Kathleen McGivern, and today we're going to continue to talk about what it means to be an art teacher boss and how to become one. In the last episode, I talked about the mindsets that art teacher bosses need to live by. Today, we're going on to the second part of this two-part series, and I'm going to give you those real and raw strategies that will set you on a growth path that will ultimately take you to the art teacher boss level. Let's dive into it. Before we begin, we have to understand what it means to be boss. Someone who is boss knows what they want, how to get what they want, and implements the process to get it. This is what it means to be boss. Essentially, you're the ultimate to-do list checker, task completer, and productivity person. Being boss is a great mindset to have. Of course, it's not just mindset. You have to feel it in your heart and you have to do the work to get there. Being boss means that you're actively and consciously doing the steps each and every day, every moment, working to make the slight improvements in yourself that are needed to get your goals and your better version of yourself. I like to say, reflect, self-improve, and calibrate perfection. Of course, this is a long journey of success, not a quick trip. This is a way of living life. This topic is so big that I had to make it a two-parter because honestly, there is so much to say. That is how important being boss is. Being an art teacher boss is a lifestyle change. And if you're ready, you can implement these changes to change your mindset and change your life. All changes are hard at the beginning, messy in the middle, and easy in the end. My lovely friend, make sure that you have your notebook ready, phone to make notes in, or if you're listening while you're driving or running, that's okay. Just jot down these t- these tips as soon as you can and get ready to implement them too so that you can be an art teacher boss. In the first part of this two-part series of being an art teacher boss, I talked about the mindsets that you can implement into your boss journey. Today, I'll talk about the things that you can do in your teaching practice to fire it up and take it to boss level. They will help you get those things checked off your to-do list and help you help you be a more productive teacher so that you can, you can leave sooner each day because living your life is kind of a big deal. All right, let's talk about the things that you can do in your teaching practice to fire it up and take it to boss level. So first step in being an art teacher boss is that you have to be your own cheerleader. Okay, so literally once you make the transformation from student teacher and get hired on as a teacher, your cheerleading squad disappears. When you're in school to become a teacher, you have all your classmates, professors, and practicum teacher cheering you on, giving you high fives and hugs, and crying at your achievements. And then you graduate, get hired as a teacher, and then you realize you're on your own. Teaching, although we have coworkers who understand us, can be pretty lonely. Although your coworkers can understand the struggles you might be facing, they won't know what it's like to be in your specific situation. We can't all be hanging out together all day because we're like in our own cubicles, boxes, whatever, educating the future. So you need to be your own cheerleader and find your way, your own ways of high-fiving yourself, giving yourself gold stars and hugs. Maybe after meeting a goal or teaching a super big art unit or lesson, um, maybe you complete your batch of art lesson plans. Like You can give yourself a reward like a nice fancy coffee from your favorite coffee shop or a bite of dark chocolate or maybe you get a new set of colored pens. Whatever it is, own it. And be your own cheerleader too because your your successes need to be celebrated. Next, you gotta put things in your classroom for you. Okay, yeah, so your classroom doesn't need to be like filled with 
things that are just for the kids. You can easily make some things dual purpose. Like at first glance, everyone's like, oh yeah, that's totally for the kids. But really, inside, you know it's for you. You can easily hang up those motivational quotes, those cool posters, or hang things from ceilings or whatever, whatever. That makes sense for a classroom, but like, they're really for you. Maybe you have a meditation area with a diffuser and a calming picture or quotes. Um, and sure, this can appear to be for the kids, but it can double up as a reminder to yourself to stay calm and chill and take deep breaths when you're feeling overwhelmed. Or maybe you just like the diffuser because it smells amazing and that keeps you calm. That's like me. <laughs> Um, Or maybe you are like me and really need that poster of kittens puking rainbows that I can see from my desk, which is on on a wall across the room. Or when I'm at my front of my room, I have on the opposing wall um, a meowgical kitten, which is a kitten with a unicorn horn, obviously. Um, These guys like give me a little chuckle when I look at them. And sometimes I just need to look up at little kitten faces doing weird things just to give me like a little happy moment when I'm feeling mildly frustrated (laughs) or whatever. You know, just sometimes you just want to look into the eyes of a cat. (laughs) Or unless you don't, you put, what I'm saying is put up things that make you happy. You do you. Okay, next thing that you got to do if you're going to be an art teacher boss, um, I start is batching, okay? Batching, batching, batching. I started batching like b-a-t-c-h-i-n-g when i started running into serious time constraints trying to both be a full-time teacher and running everything misertastic consistently once i started batching for that i realized i could easily do this at school too to make everything streamlined and easier and to speed up the processes so batching batching sorry (laughs) means you're essentially doing a large batch of one thing all at once so for instance right now i'm recording this podcast but this is like the fourth one that i've recorded in a row so I'm batching it, you see? Um, so for Misertastic, I'll do like five YouTube videos at once or four blog, blog posts or four podcasts and write six newsletters, whatever. Um, that way it's done for a while. So it seems like a lot, but you're done for, like I'll be done for a while. It also means you can focus on one thing for a long time instead of breaking up your focus on a lot, lots of different things. So for example, if you batch your lesson plans, you won't have to do those for a while instead of like every day or every other, other evening or every weekend. So what could you batch? So things that I batch at work is like lesson planning, um, example making, photocopying, like I'll go in and I'll photocopy for weeks at a time. Because I'll first do my lesson plans. I'll batch all of those. So I'll have three weeks of lesson plans. And my day my day binder. My day plan binder, sorry. All done. Then I'll pull out all the things I want to photocopy. And I'll batch photocopy that. And then I'll organize it into bins. Um, and then I'm done. And then I can relax and take my time coming to work. Because I drive, again, for like an hour both ways. <laughs> so um, next is to keep a to-do list. So it could be either like a real paper one or a digital. I have all of the above because I usually just grab what's nearest to me. Um, so thinking you're magically going to remember everything is completely ridiculous. I can't even remember what I needed at the grocery store after like I looked in my fridge before I left. I will get there and I'll just... <laughs> stand at the beginning of the store like I don't know (laughs) I cannot focus guys um so literally that's asking too much of myself so if you want to keep on task organized and have everything done in decent time and by the expectations of yourself your students the parents the administrators then you gotta make to-do lists but like boss level ones so that you can easily be like the post-it note person um Maybe you have a post-it for every task stuck to your wall so you can like organize those in like an array (laughs) with post-it notes. And then that way when you've completed it, you can have that satisfaction where you like grab that post-it note off the wall and scrunch it and recycle it, obviously. 
Um, but there is like new things. Okay, so technology has like changed this, guys. So I'm a fan of like the oh so many different digital options. Post-it actually has an app for that. Um, so if you want, you can have post notes but like digital versions so you're not actually buying post notes and wasting post notes and trees and energy but you can get an app for that now so but my favorite ones that I like to use so I have three because I have a lot going on and I like to use different ones for different visualizations and organization depends on the task so like Google keep notes that's like personal stuff most of the time or like quick little thinkers shopping lists, my like the days to-do list. I'll put those on Google Keep. Um, Asana is like a new one I discovered and guys, it's pretty. When you complete a task, a unicorn, magical unicorn. No, it's not. It's a narwhal, so it's not a unicorn. It already has no horn. I don't know. But it's magical and it flies, obviously, across the screen when you complete your task, which is important. But what's really actually important is that you can like make really pretty organized grids or um to normal to-do lists but you can also have nice bright colors and then i'll make a different list for all my different thoughts or categories that i have in my brain so i think of it kind of like a filing cabinet that's pretty but also in each of those files is my to-do lists so that's kind of how i think about it um so i basically take it out of my head and i put it into asana so that's spelled a-s-a-n-a I really like that one and, and it really does feel satisfying when the magical narwhal, rainbow flying narwhal, which is like my style if you know what I mean, it's like flying through the air when I'm done. It's really satisfying. Oh and finally is Airtable and that one is a really good task calendar so you could do like product project calendars, you can do individual tasks, um, you can do it for like lesson plans your to-do list for the year, whatever. Like Airtable, you it will sync to your computer and your phone. Um, you need to have Airtable in your life. So yeah, Google Keep Notes, Asana, and Airtable. Those are your digital task calendars or to-do lists. They're amazing and they're my top faves. I've gone through a lot. These ones I find for myself, I like them, and they help me keep myself on task for both my career and personal life. Okay, next mindset is that you got to write down your goals. So yes, write down your goals, keep them on a goal sheet or put them in a journal. So this is essential in the process if you want to monitor your growth, because how can you measure growth and see your accomplishments if you don't make a goal list that you check off as you go? Next is check in on your accomplishments and view progress. So since you went ahead and wrote down all those goals, now you need to maintain the checking in of them. So you have to look back and remind yourself of what the goals were. Then twice or three times a year, you need to look at your goals and see your progress. So are you close to achieving it? Have you achieved them? Have you achieved any? Check them off or give a sticker to the ones that you complete at the end of the year. Maybe it's even on New Year's Day as a routine and something to look forward to. You can look at the list a final time and view your progress and this way you stick to your goals and feel the accomplishments trust me you'll love this in a year <laughs> now since a year is done make a new goal list next is to be confident you are a big deal and you are amazing feel that and own that as well, you are inspiring kids to be creative thinkers, a skill in which they can take into any career and is essential in the workforce, especially now, especially when the entrepreneur field is on the rise. Just remember that next time when somebody argues about the importance of our education. Mm -hmm. Oh, also I have a whole blog post just explaining the importance of our education. So in case they like want to argue about that which makes me cringe inside slash other things okay but again you my lovely friend are a big deal so be confident and remember it is okay to say no for some reason this expectation has grown where suddenly our teachers are expected to have like to have to like 
use their talents to paint windows for Christmas or be guilted into murals or whatever for no extra pay. Oh, could you paint me this banner? Now, if you want to do it, go for it. I'm not saying don't do it, but if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. It is not your part of your job description to be like this entity that creates things on command because other people have like fixed mind sense and think they can't. Here's my suggestion. Kindly say no with a smile um, and offer them the suggestion that they can use their projector to project whatever it is that they want bigger and trace it. Um, and no, they cannot use the art room paint because you barely have enough paint for your kids in your classroom to learn. It's, that's your budget. Um, so unless the school does provide you with the extra money for this, then I guess it's fine. But I'm think, I think in most cases it's, it's not the typical. Um, and remember, there is more where that came from. So dig deep and pull it out and shine. Celebrate the small wins. So thinking of trying to achieve a big goal can feel pretty overwhelming and slow the progress to actually getting the goal accomplished is a feeling or sense of forever. But if you create small goals and complete them, then you should celebrate. Maybe if you were able to batch all your lesson planning and photocopying for the next couple weeks, then you get some like dark chocolate or like a piece off of a bar or get to watch a show on Netflix or maybe you fill up the tub with bubbles obviously and play some tropical rainforest sounds on a Bluetooth speaker with candles while sipping some wine or whatever. I don't know. A great way to do this is if you write a list of wins that you want to achieve in the next couple weeks or week. Once you achieve five or ten or whatever makes sense to you, then you get that reward. Yes, and definitely write that reward on the paper. Like, yeah. Yep, we're totally doing this for the kids, but do it for you. Honestly, you will be loving that reward. It will feel special, and you will get to look at that huge list that you just finished crossing off, and you can leave at the end of the day or week feeling like you accomplished a lot, which will make you feel less stress and less overwhelmed, especially if you sit in that bubble bath and do some deep breathing with a drink. Just saying. <laughs> okay, one more. So the last thing, the last last thing our teacher bosses need, man, is this. You gotta create a positive environment and surround yourself with positive people. So workplaces are full of all kinds of people and this is true for schools too. Make sure that you surround yourself with positive people. Listen, hanging around people who are negative and just sit and complain about everything makes you feel the same way. And then suddenly, suddenly you wonder why you're feeling so down and angry. No one needs that in their lives. Teaching is already stressful. So change your mindset and make the conscious decision to surround yourself with positive people and make your classroom uh, the positive environment. This is a boss decision that has to be made. No toxicity, please. Okay, here is your action item, art teacher boss. Remember, you are a big deal. Okay, pick one of the one of these to dos, um, one of these tasks to do each week. Okay, so pick one of these suggestions to do each week. If you need to re-listen to this episode, you can, or you can find the show notes on my blog, MizArtastic.com. Write down the headers or whatever you need to do um, and make it your goal to implement one a week. Make it your focus. Write it in your phone. Actively think about each week's focus until you've implemented them all as a new habit. Write a journal daily or weekly and reflect on the transformation and progress. At the end of the day, Sorry, at the end of this transformation, see what the difference is. You can totally do your reflections on social media like TikTok, Instagram, or Twitter in videos and tag me at Mizertastic or use the hashtag Mizertastic Podcast so I can hear your stories. I hope you, I hope, sorry. I hope you can implement these in your teaching practice to fire you up in your art teacher journey and take it to boss level. So 
These will allow you to be ready to tackle anything and will kickstart your growth. So make sure you follow this podcast and be ready for when the newest episode arrives. Of course, if you really want to be the ultimate art teacher boss, make sure you join me and the other members of the Artastic Collective, my membership, which opens twice a year, once in um, January and once in August. Um, you can find it at www.artasticcollective.com and there you're going to be able to find out more about the Artastic Collective and how I'm going to solve all of your lesson planning problems and making you sane. I am planned forever. Yep, you will get that feeling, seriously. Anyway, talk soon. This is Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing out.